One of my favorite movies, I, I decided this week to pick a movie that maybe somebody that other than me would know. So, um, one of my favorite new... Uh, <laughs> yeah. So say it with me. If you're going to go somewhere and you got to be somebody, you got to stop and pay attention. She was able to take those kids off the street. It reminds me of my beloved friend, Vi Higginson. She's actually been through here with her daughter, Noelle. That that's exactly what she does. She takes the homeless kids out of Harlem, the ones that feel like they have no meaning and that they don't belong, and she tells them, know your name. And she takes those kids. If you're going to go somewhere, if you're going to be somebody and you're going to go somewhere, you want to stop and pay attention. Those kids have gone to Japan. They have been the backup singers for Madonna, but they came from a place of not knowing where they could go and how they could be. That's a change, as Reverend Ron said, in consciousness. It's a decision. It's a thought, right? The only thing that limits success is the difference between I can and I can't. We, we talk every week about principles. We share our unity principles. We share what we believe with science of mind. And principles are our guiding light. They are. They are our navigating system. They are what leads us from one part of our journey to another. There is no doubt about that. But one of the things that's very important is that we can have all the principles in the world, but if our habits do not line with our principles, we are not congruent in our own understanding, yes? And so it's key that we recognize and realize daily what are we doing? What are we participating in? What are we connecting with? What's the conversations that we're having? What, what are we sharing with our friends? What are we posting on Twitter and social media? Does that match that principle-based person that we see on Sunday morning? Is that the same person or is that someone new? It really is about picking a side of direction because when you are a principle-based person and a principle centered person every habit you pick you not only are aware that you're picking it but you are aware of the reason that you're using it because if you are not of aware that you have picked it and you're using it it is going to use you and use you up yes and so yesterday ended last night and it is a brand new moment and in the, in the summertime, it's a beautiful time to reflect with what habits you have. There's something exciting about the heat of the time of year. And those of you that are watching, we don't really know that so much in Florida. But, you know, it's there. It's a heat. It's a passion. It's an invigorating spirit that is wanting to come out around the summertime. The days are long. And we have longer days to fill with either the things we want in our lives or the things we don't want in our lives. Does this work for you today? Are you willing to go that direction with me? When I think about habits, I draw forth the second Bible in my life, and that's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. Some of the best material ever written on the planet. He, he nailed it, we would say. But he says that it's important that you recognize that in your life it is necessary for you to be proactive. Rather than reactive. An event plus a response equals the outcome. It's not the outcome equals response. 
equals a new event. It's an event plus a response equals the outcome. So many people spend their time in their prayer work on the event itself. Where you want to spend your prayer work is on your response. <laughs> because it is the response that's going to shape the next moment and the next chapter of your life. And that is where it's the only thing in life that you have control over. Is <laughs> that response. Right? And so you want to be aware when something occurs in your life. You want to be aware when you hear something on the selective news that's chosen for a reason. You want to be aware of, am I reacting or am I being proactive? When I'm talking about those people over there and they're not doing what I feel that they ought to do, that's reactive conversation. The question is, what are you going to do about it? That's the question. Because great people don't talk about other people. They talk about the actions that they are going to take charge of in their lives. That's what they do. They are proactive. I, since unity, brought my life back at 19 years old. I made a promise about being proactive and that I would dedicate my life to making sure as many people as I could share the message with about truth and clearing people's confusion about the death of old traditional religiosity that taught people you're unworthy and you want to amount to anything and there's uh, real estate places like heaven and hell. I promised myself I would spend the rest of my life in my own understanding with my own principles teaching something different and unique. And I promised myself that. I promised myself that. And often I have a feeling about proactivity because I get upset in a proactive way when I hear of all these New Thought communities that are not making it, that are affirming that they don't have people coming, that they're not diverse, that they're not inclusive. And I go, wow, what is the, what is the issue? Not talking about those people, but how to be proactive. We produce 30, 40 teachers a year in our organization. That means we're shrinking. When you have 600 communities across the country and you have 30 people you put out in the field a year, you're shrinking. Because of the 600 people die, they retire, or they just decide they don't want to do it anymore. You stay with me, stay with me now. I wanted to be part of that change. Proactivity is creating an institute where people can be licensed and ordained as spiritual leaders in a year and a half. A year and a half. Not the rest of their lives. Not 10 year program, but a year and a half program. We cannot have enough spiritual leaders representing our teaching in the world. Right? We don't need to make it hard. Right? We don't need to make it hard. We need people who are modeling and teaching, and age is not an issue. There's no limitation. It's just about that, being proactive. That was good coffee and spice routes. I'm just, I'm like, if you need a lift today, go back there. I mean, I feel like I'm coming off an AA meeting. Oh my God. <clears throat> Another habit that I feel is important, and they're all important, but one of them is begin with the end in mind. And we talked last week about in the beginning, because this is the beginning. But when you are a visionary in Scripture, it says in Proverbs 29:18, those who do not have a vision perish. And it also goes on to say, and he who is with the law is happy. Happy. Happy because you understand how the law works. Happy because you understand how prayer works. Happy because you understand how having a vision work. Because whatever vision you have, it is going to happen. 
You may not see it today, but all your visions, you want to have them with an end in mind. So many people, what do I mean by that? So many people live their lives with the end in mind. You know, they can be 30. Well, when I retire, I'm going to get an RV and I'm going to travel across the country. And I have a proactive moment and I think, honey, you're already retired. Because you have a dream in some future state, right? And so our people will say, well, when I don't have a lot going on, I'm going to, you know, give my create. I'm going to start being a teacher. I'm going to give my creativity to do something else a little bit more profound for my community. When you live your life with the end in mind, you never get to the end. You begin now with the space of what you're holding you give yourself a name by keeping that end over there when I was in my 50s people were so quick to share with me I'm sure you've had some commentators in your life I've had a few in mine and when I was in my 50s people started sharing with me oh well you know you think you know you think there's stuff going on now and I'm thinking I didn't say there's stuff going on now <laughs> What, what kind of stuff? I don't know. And they, and they go, well, you know, you're 50s and you just wait till you get 60. I mean, I've just barely gotten 50 already and, and I'm getting all this, you know, unwanted advisement about what I was going to be when I'm 60. And I'm thinking, I believe in vision. I believe in a law. I don't buy into that stuff, right? And so I created a vision in my early 50s that when I got into my 60s I was going to have so much energy that people would go wow how do you do it wow and then when people would ask me my age and they'd say how old are you and I'd go I'm 60 they go get out you're really 60 and I'd go yes <laughs> and and a couple of weeks ago someone 20 said he told me he was 20 and he said well you know what age are you and I said I'm 60 he said God you have so much energy for a 60 year old I said honey I have a whole lot more than that I'm holding back <laughs> you see what I'm saying so so what are you creating what are you creating in your life that you feel it that you're coming to it but you begin it now and then you're guided as to what you're needed in the moment. Myrtle Fillmore said that, you know, you'll go through phases in your life when you feel like nothing is happening. And in those moments that you feel like nothing is happening, that is the time to develop a stronger relationship with your God. And because it's not that things aren't happening, it's that you are getting prepared to enter into a larger room with more light you see and it's real important to know that and real important to align with that because you're always the beauty of facts is they are designed to be made wrong and we are not a statistic you know I think of beloved Frank and Joyce that they didn't often even say how many years of anniversary they were celebrating because they said people would put an age number on them and limit them. You understand that? And so it's like paying attention. Stop, pay attention. What kind of limit are you putting on yourself? What kind of reality are you putting on yourself? Because you're putting it on yourself. The world is wide open and open for new ideas and more proactive people. And the other habit I want to just highlight for you to think about is the value of putting first things first and stay committed to that. What lights you up? Is it love? You can participate. <laughs> Here's the way all of you look. Let me give you feedback. <laughs> what is it that lights you up? Love? Dogs? 
Yes. Music. Music. Those are the things that are your first things first. They're your first things first. Don't spend your time or energy or conversation on things that are not first in your life. Have your values line up with that. If you come to a place every week that says we accept you the way you are, breathe that in. Don't spend the other six days of the week talking about the four people that don't like you. Because if you were really telling the truth, you don't particularly care for them either. But as a spiritual person, we love everybody. But where do we spend our time? Where do we spend? People don't abandon us. We abandon us. So first things first. What do you decide are the most important things in your life? And every day you are a filtering system of not letting anything else in that is less important. Because when you know what's important, you don't focus on things that don't matter to you. And you're in the way holding on to those ideas that would be very important to someone else, but not you. If you're going to go somewhere and you're going to be somebody, you've got to stop and pay attention. Pay attention in your life. And so I'm going to close with one of your uh, stories that many of you have heard, but I love it. And it's just too appropriate today. So there's this woman that she's driving down Central, and there's a car in front of her, and she's in a hurry. And she's rushing around, and the guy in front of her comes to a light that's turning yellow, and she just knows he's going to go on through. Well, he didn't. He slammed on brakes. Well, she slammed on brakes, too. And she was so upset. And so she starts just laying on her horn, you know, because she can't believe he didn't go on through. And so then she starts doing sign language out the window. You know, and so by this time, a police officer had noted that, you know, what is she doing? And so he pulls her over because she was making quite a scene. And so the police officer says, give me your license and your registration. And so she provides it. And he goes, ma'am, you need to get in the car and I need to take you down to the station. Just like, okay. She goes down to the station. A few hours pass and the officer says, okay, ma'am, you can go. She said, well, that's really nice, but I never really understood what I did. What did I do that was wrong? He said, well, you have to understand it from my perspective. He said, I'm watching what's going on. You're yelling. You're blowing the horn. You're making all these ugly sign languages out the window. And he said, and I look at your car, and you have a bumper sticker. We are all one. Uh, let there be peace on earth. I go to unity, coexist, you know, coexist, love is the answer. Ma'am, I thought you were driving a stolen car. <laughs> Don't let your life be stolen. Allow your values, your habits, and your principles to go in the same direction. God bless you. Thank you.